How do you cultivate self-awareness? Um, I think failure is by far and away the best, the, the, the best way, right? It's, uh, um, I do, yeah, I, I do, I do think, fa- I mean, fa- failure is by far and away the best, the, 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 the best and most humbling experience in terms of, okay, I failed at something and then revisiting what went wrong and, and why did it go, why did it go wrong? Um, because rarely you fail from a lack of effort. Um, it's more about, it's, it's more the skill of, of, of something or, or again, or, or just not being open-minded enough and, and aware enough of, of what's happening around you. Um, so I, I, I do feel like those, those moments of failure, um, and then course correcting on the back of that, I think they're by far and away the best, the best ways of doing it. Again, it comes down to experience. Right. Um, and in terms of frameworks to harness the lessons of failure, are there any patterns or general approaches that you've been exposed to that you really value, whether it's at Amazon, Deliveroo? Yeah, I think um, there's, there's always that. So the, the conversation around, you know, fail, fail often, fail fast. Um, and I think there's a starting point, which is probably don't, don't start with the mindset of this is going, I'm going to fail. I think that's absolutely the wrong mindset. You want to start with the fact this is going to succeed. But I think the but creates cultivating a culture which is failure is okay and actually failure is expected. If you're trying hard things, you will fail. Um, I think that I don't think I've I've ever witnessed a child that's basically been born and started walking immediately and has never has not fallen over um, because like walking is a skill and you have to learn how to do it and before you learn how to do it you're gonna fall over many times and if you always got discouraged by a child falling down then that be most people wouldn't walk because they'd, they'd always stay we'd, we'd as a race we'd stay crawling um, and I think organizations is kind of the same way if they've if you've got this environment where you can't fail, you can't fail, then you're going to build a crawling organization, not an organization that gets up on its feet and can run and, and, can, and can move and can keep on developing. Um, and I think that that's probably the best way of thinking about organizations that do create this fear of failure. Um, you're kind of holding your people down, you're keeping them on the hands and knees. Um, and then don't be surprised they don't move very fast. So, so I think you do need to create that. that again, it's part of down protection. Um, if your people people feel safe, they'll take risks, um, but not bet the company risks because obviously that's you don't want, you don't take too many of those. That's probably gambling. Um, what you're doing is taking measured risks, and and then you can you can reinvest and um, when you see things are working, and you can dial dial it up a little bit and say, okay, well, at five percent this is working. What about fifteen percent? Oh yeah, this is still working. What about twenty five percent, thirty percent? Don't always go straight to a hundred and then. Um, realize that, oh, wait a minute, we just, we just bankrupt the company. Um, I think that that's the bad form of risk. How do you make people feel safe? Um, and I think we'll go back to the, the clock, for example, but, um, the first, the first thing is, I think it's, it's very, it's, it's very easy to create a blame culture. Um, and to say, to, to get to a point where what went wrong, who made the mistake, why did you do that? Um, the strange things I've, I've, I was watching recently, when you start asking people why, they'll just make up something because they feel obliged to give the, the why. Um, even if there's that, they've not, they just have to answer the why question. I think what's more interesting is understanding um, what was the situation, what were the things that you did, and what were the inputs that didn't deliver the output you were expecting. Um, and then it's like, you can then question, well, did you do all of the right things? And therefore the output just wasn't as expected. Um, and are there different things we can try? But if you start with the principle that people are trying to achieve success, then the best thing is, and you and you work on the, I guess, the belief of human nature, and most people are trying to be do things well, then you start back to, well, given that's true, um, they tried to succeed, these are all the things that they tried. Is there anything that either they, the timing was just wrong, or they just missed one or two pieces in there? And then what did you do to help them? Did you give them the skill? Did you give them the support? Did you give them the time? Did you give them the right the right environment? Um, and I think that's the starting point as a leader is, what was my role in their failure? Did they have all the right equipment, everything that needed to do the environment? Were they well rested? Were they getting distracted by like emails at 11 o'clock at night that were not relevant to the thing they were doing? Um, did you did you create that environment for them to succeed? Um, and I think when you start with your with yourself and the environment, then you're more forgiving of, of the outcome. Um, and again, it's back to, okay, it's, it's not the individual. Um, and they didn't go from being great to give the opportunity to do something to then fail. Something probably went wrong in the process. 
There's a quote that I just came across from Robert Greenleaf, who writes a book on servant leadership. He talks about the great leader as seeing failure and difficulty, first of all, in himself, mm -hmm. before, um, or at least looking at that from an internal perspective, taking the problems in his environment and looking at his responsibility in those first. Yeah, and I think, and I, and I think it's it's very true. Right? It's you, you're you're the you're you're the the senior person, the person creating the environment, the person almost supporting and managing prioritizations. Um, and so, if something fails, you have to start with yourself. Um, and only at that point, when you say, "Well, have I done everything to give this person, this group of people, this organization the best chance of success?" Um, and I think that's where it has to start.